Hello. Uh, today I wanted to show you um, a trick I figured out um, for solving uh, some of the problems I have with my GUI project. So, basically, um, this all started when I had the idea that, like, in order to experiment more and figure out like what is what are good abstractions for GUI, um, I had this thought of like in Rust, the thing that is often aimed at is like zero cost abstractions, and with GUI aiming for zero cost abstractions is like a bit weird because there isn't really any zero abstraction uh, GUI implementation or um, or I, I guess low abstraction. I mean, I guess the one thing that does exist is immediate mode GUI, but saying like, <laughs> so in immediate mode GUI, you just, it's usually in games, you just render the whole thing in each frame and like you do layout just your your options for layout are constrained to single pass algorithms and like you have to do layout in the same pass as you do render so it's quite constraining when it comes to that um, but like that's the only thing I can really think of in as like low abstraction GUIs so I had like, or I mean, I haven't come across anything else, but in theory, you could like do a more retained mode style GUI in a low abstraction way, but I don't like that would look quite complicated. But then I had the thought of like, maybe I should actually try to do that sort of. Um, because it would be interesting, because then you could actually think about abstractions a bit better. Uh, so I thought, okay, no abstraction will be really hard, but like we can try low abstraction, uh, <laughs> which basically means, if I'll show you my normal uh, widget trait, <clears throat> which is, uh, I've simplified it a bit, so now there's only layout, where you get self and state. So self is just like a, it's kind of the declarative description of the widget. I mean, yeah, sort of, but like state is just all the state that's actually retained across like, not only frames, but like across, I guess, passes. Uh, this can be regenerated all the time, <laughs> basically. Um, and there's all these functions. Now, you could certainly like if you if you wanted to do a low abstraction <laughs> GUI with this, you certainly could. But it would mean that if you you build a custom widget, you have to implement all those methods. So like that would be quite annoying. <laughs> so like let's say you want to do some GUI with a list, then you have to. Uh, even if there's a utility function for list, which is actually something I want to build, um, you'd have to use it in all of those functions. And that would, yeah, you just wouldn't do it. You'd find some other way. Um, and that's also what I <laughs> tried. So I thought like the only way I can really explore this style of like low abstraction GUI is with a single function widget interface because, yeah, that's just kind of the only way. Um, because if you do custom widget, you have to implement all the functions, and that means, yeah, one function uh, should be <laughs> enough. So uh, I thought a bunch about like. Uh, I think passing an enum for like which pass it is um, is actually that's quite obvious, 
but the problem is always return values. Uh, so <laughs> after like a bunch of like moving things around, I had this like um, test project, or uh, actually I was trying it on Rust Playground. Uh, I figured out this, <laughs> or I had the idea of like, uh, having the pass be generic over a type, which is the return type, I guess it could be R. Um, and then in each uh, in each variant, having uh, a function that accepts the return type you want in that pass. So uh, test input post layer returns an option of U8, uh, which is exactly what it returns uh, over here, right? Uh, so, yeah, and then <laughs> that returns T. So in practice, this will always be an identity function. So a function that just returns its input. Um, now, it's only relevant in two of the function calls currently. Um, I used to... Uh, actually return uh, something in layout, uh, which was just the size. But since I've changed it that, because layout results basically in not only size, but also, um, I mean, min size, you can actually then change it or render it larger than what it returned, but also extra layers. So you could either return both of those but you also always need a way to actually get them uh, afterwards um, because you don't want like the container to also have to store them because that would just be redundant. And so I thought, let's just return nothing here um, and have it always basically ask. Um, I'm not like totally set on that. Mm. I might change my mind. I think in some cases it could be more elegant to just have it returned. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. So basically, I mean, it doesn't make a huge difference, uh, but it just forces uh, <laughs> forces the function to actually return something. Uh, and like, because these could be, uh, like the other option when using an enum would be either mutable references but then like they need to be initialized with something. I guess in th this case, it would just be none. And in this case, there's also like, this could be false, um, but it's just a bit ugly. Um, and yeah, the other thing would be yeah, an FN once that accepts the value that's just passed in with each variant, but like nothing forces the function to actually call it. So, uh, that's like making every return type an option, kinda, <laughs> and that's also not so cool. Um, so yeah, so now I'm doing this. Uh, now, of course, this isn't great either, because um, these are function pointers, and they're not free. Uh, I mean, they're not very expensive either, but uh, each of those uh, is a pointer to the actual place where the function is in memory, the function code. Uh, and yeah, if you're actually using um, closures, usually you don't need to actually pass pointers around because everything's generic or your closure type but I think that wouldn't work here because you'd have to for each variant have a type like have a generic parameter here and um, then like in the places you use it you'd only actually have one so the compiler wouldn't be able to figure out what the other ones are um, so yeah, I don't think that would actually work because actually there isn't ever an instance that like 
because this is always an identity function, except in the case where it doesn't return anything. There it's like, I've done this, which I guess you could make this accept empty tuple to make it actually be identity as well here. Or I could just have it be T itself. You could just return a value or, yeah, I don't know. But I've settled on this, but it doesn't matter. Um, so, yeah, th this isn't free. Uh, and, like, the problem is also, except maybe in some cases, I don't think the compiler can optimize this well. So, like, there will still be enum matching code generated uh, and actually this function will have a variant for each uh, I guess return type um, and so yeah this isn't like code generation wise this isn't optimal but type system wise it's quite nice uh, and so I'm actually only like my intention for this is just to make it easier to experiment with <laughs> with GUI library design because you can actually do low level stuff with this like having a um, actually I have it here I've lifted this from another project um, where I have to do layout um, <clears throat> and basically this is like how I do or like the low level thing of flexbox there um, and this is basically a measure layout. So uh, what you do is like when building up a flexbox like thing, you create this with like what's the uh, width it can be unconstrained if it's none. Also has a gap thing. Um, and then you like you call add for expand with fractions or fixed with this can also be measured like this will be measured when you actually use it and then you can build it and it creates a draw layout and based on that you can f calculate width um, for the expanded parts which is basically yeah, just the low level logic of flexbox and then you could like manually use this uh, in a widget but yeah, I'm not actually sure if I'm going to utilize this in that way, but I also figured out that you can use this uh, for stateful widgets. Now, I haven't actually created like an abstraction around it. Like, I guess a macro would be possible or something else. Still can't use closures though, but um, because it's generic. Uh, but I've rewritten the drop down such that um, it, yeah, the drop down used to be I have this <laughs> this other uh, dynamic stateful widget which actually uses a similar enum thing where it actually where returns <laughs> are actually options. Uh, I, I'll yeah I'm, I'll probably replace this. Um, uh, where you or oh, actually let me am I still using that somewhere uh, find for final references ah oh, yeah I'm using it here uh, where you basically <clears throat> you get it in a handler and you call dot widget on it with a widget uh, and then it like with uh, in a box it has it creates a state for it and like with within any type so it's like quite dynamic which is not something I like <laughs> but uh, this yeah that's what I did to make progress with stateful widgets but in drop down I replaced this with uh, with one of those pass widget things um, it's a bit ugly. I tried to uh, use uh, what are they called? Um, like those generic, no, not generic. Um, mm, basically, 
blank like making blanket inputs so each pass widget is also a widget but unfortunately like as it is with um, blanket inputs on generic traits uh, they tend to make problems uh, so yeah um, that didn't work out so unfortunately you have to wrap it with that but yeah anyway so with this it's possible to like this is the state no this is this isn't the state uh this is the state um it's either open and it has uh, open or not and it has a widget state which is just the state of uh <laughs> of the inner thing uh, it's using which is pop up um and basically here i'm just using it and then like i proxy the pass function essentially uh, so this is the pop-up state, mm, but using uh, impl, tr impl or trait alias or whatever that feature is called, still unstable, uh, type alias impl trait, yeah. Um, right, so yeah, you can actually replace <laughs> Stateful uh, widgets with that, um, and then yeah. So that's I I like this much better than uh, than the other solution with the dynamic one. I think the dynamic one is still cool for like cases where you actually need it to be dynamic. So where it's different widget types at different times so it changes um, then that's absolutely fine and that works but I don't like <laughs> I don't like the solution for like when it's actually always the same type it's just unnecessary memory allocation and dynamic dispatch no it's not actually dynamic dispatch uh, no, but it's just unnecessary memory allocation. And like using it in any type and so on. Uh, so, yeah. So that's basically that. Uh, and I'll, I'll try and finish this whole thing at some point. Um, so, or I guess just use it as an example. Or do an example with that. That could be quite interesting. Um, maybe I'll actually implement some GUI with like just low-level things, um, like without having these like really abstract things I have here, like um, where I uh, right like use this flex content macro. Uh, just to manually manage the state of all the widgets. And yeah, that should be interesting and maybe give me some <laughs> insight <laughs> to uh, like how to abstract a widget library better. But I mean, it's actually weird because I'm trying to figure out what is a zero cost. I mean, I, I'm guessing I'll never like can't get to like truly zero cost GUI because it's just like too complicated of a subject to like really abstract properly without any cost over what like would be an optimal manual implementation but uh yeah like it's interesting because i'm like trying to derive a low cost GUI abstraction by using this like kind of high cost structure of like passing function pointers around with a generic function, but yeah, I'm hoping it'll be like a good step on the way of figuring out or g gaining more insight on the subject. So yeah, that's basically it. See ya.